We are here in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh at the headquarters of the International Energy Forum. And I'm absolutely delighted now joining me is the Secretary General of OPEC, Mohamed Barkindo. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time to join us. This is Thank you for having me, Edna. You're very welcome. This is the seventh uh, energy outlook now, the combined outlook. How important is it? And what is the changes? What have you seen over the years in terms of these outlooks? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this uh, annual symposium is a landmark one. Uh, we had started uh, this series way back, and as you rightly said, this is the seventh session, uh, analyzing the various uh, outlooks, uh, uh, primarily from OPEC, uh, the IEA, uh, and then other uh, stakeholders as well. Uh, we in OPEC, uh, we are in the 10th edition, uh, of our world oil outlook. If you recall, uh, you covered uh, the uh, launching of uh, this outlook in Abu Dhabi at Adipec. Uh, so it's uh, unique in many sense. So this uh, uh, event today ha has given us further opportunity to compare our outlook, particularly with the IEA. Uh, it's an annual event. But I must say that the level of attendance uh, and the quality of the participation uh, has improved tremendously. And so we have made uh, significant uh, progress uh, in which the global industry as a whole will benefit. And of course we see here people from governments, policy makers. Um, give us a feel for some of the, the people that you've been talking with today to, throughout this. I mean, people, and, and a very global event. There's people from around the world at this event. Yeah, it's, it's an international event. Uh, it has grown over the years. Uh, this is the highest level of attendance we have had in the seven series. And also the diversity. You have uh, participants from all over the world. Uh, come in and from all aspects of the industry, upstream, midstream, downstream, gas, uh, the financial people, the IOCs, the independents, the national oil companies, in addition to, of course, to OPEC and the IEA. So uh, I think uh, IEF has uh, achieved uh, one of its key objectives of bringing uh, all stakeholders, particularly producers and consumers, together, sitting side by side, in a relaxed atmosphere, uh, to crunch numbers, to compare notes, agree to disagree, uh, all in the interest of uh, the industry, in the interest of transparency and all inclusiveness. Now, what role, how important do you think the International Energy Forum has become? Um, also, when we look at the, the data sharing initiative and Jody and that, but the work of the International Energy Forum, what it set out to do and how important it is right now to the industry. Uh, the IEF has gradually come of age uh, and we must salute uh, the vision of uh, late King Abdullah uh, uh, bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of blessed memory uh, with his able lieutenants uh, uh, who conceptualize the idea of transforming, if you recall, the producer-consumer dialogue into an institutionalized uh, forum uh, named the International Energy Forum and uh, uh, generously agreed to host it here in Riyadh in this uh, beautiful edifice, uh, funding it. Uh, I had participated in drafting the framework uh, of this forum uh, and when we started not many were quite enthusiastic uh, but uh, today uh, we'll say alhamdulillah we have seen the fruits of the vision of uh, King Abdullah uh, uh, Abin Abdulaziz and his able lieutenants in Saudi Arabia. Now talk to me just a little bit before you go to about the OPEC, non-OPEC agreement. You've been very, very busy over the last year since you took office, not, e not even a year. Um, and again, really putting that in place, getting to the agreement, a very historic agreement, many people saying. And again, the community and looking at the, the, the results we've seen, you must be very encouraged by that in the last few months. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this cycle, this oil cycle, that had started uh, in November of 2014 uh, is the fifth oil cycle uh, uh, in recent memory and some of us have been around we have lived through all these five cycles 
and uh, there's a consensus even at this meeting that this recent cycle is the most severe in terms of its consequences on the industry, uh, on companies, uh, on the producing nations, uh, in the longevity of the cycle itself, uh, with all the consequences on the macroeconomy. Uh, therefore, OPEC uh, found itself in the position that it had to uh, tighten its belt and refocus itself, and if you like, almost relaunch itself uh, to its uh, statutory responsibilities. Uh, when I came on board in August to rebuild consensus within the group uh, and also to open dialogue with the non-OPEC uh, in order to proactively and jointly uh, take actions that will assist the market in uh, bringing it uh, back to balance. Of course, uh, it uh, involved extensive uh, consultations formally and informally both within the OPEC group and between OPEC and non-OPEC and including other, other stakeholders. Uh, I can tell you that of all the cycles that I have witnessed, uh, I have not seen the level of uh, consensus that emerged as a result of these extensive consultations, uh, the convergence of views on the need for OPEC to lead the way together with non-OPEC uh, in order to assist the market uh, to accelerate the rebalancing uh, process. And uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, we were able to achieve that. We had three landmark decisions last year, as you recall, uh, on the 28th of September. Uh, 2016, we had the Algiers Accord in Algeria uh, that turned around uh, the trend uh, at that time and uh, turned the market atmosphere to a positive uh, uh, trend uh, and uh, for the first time took a decision on the level of production uh, for uh, the OPEC uh, uh, 11 uh, uh, and uh, mandating us at the conference to begin to work with the non-OPEC to bring them on board because as marginal suppliers to the market it was impossible for us alone to achieve our objectives and this we worked uh, assiduously, tirelessly and uh, uh, on the 30th of November in Vienna, we had the Vienna Agreement among ourselves, and then on the 10th of no December, the joint declaration with the 11 non-OPEC. And now, for the first time in history, uh, we've got 24 producing countries coming together jointly to take action and agreeing to monitor the implementation of this decision, and went further to even set up for the first time in history, a joint monitoring committee at ministerial level uh, to uh, ensure the uh, timely and full implementation of this decision to bring back or bring it forward, the rebalancing process uh, in the course of 2017. And from all uh, preliminary numbers that are still coming out, uh, I can say that we are on course. Super. So you're happy with the results that you're seeing at the moment. Monitoring committee in place. You're going to hear from them very soon. Um, when we look at the, the price levels of the market, you're hearing good feedback from the industry. You think that, uh, that there's, a, there's a good response, I think. Uh, beyond our expectations, but uh, I want to align myself with uh, the president of the OPEC conference, Khalid Al-Fali, uh, who admitted himself as being a perfectionist that we are aiming at 100% uh, and is doable uh, and we can do it.